So as I round out the year, I've been doing tons of top lists, top 10 lists of worst watches, most hated watches, micro brand watches, best watches of the year. Today, I wanted to get into the independent watch space. I wanted to do my top independent watches of 2021. I gave myself some rules. So based on my channel, I wanted to make this an affordable list as well. So under $5,000. So the watches on this list run from $500 to $5,000 and these are all made by independent brands. Uh, and that $500 one is super interesting. It's a watch that I actually purchased and I've been waiting for for a little while. Hopefully I will get that soon and I'll be featuring that on the channel. I'm gonna get right into it. These are in no particular order. Essentially, as I thought of them throughout the year, I wrote them down and that's how I make these lists. So there is no order. I actually mix them up on purpose. Uh, and some of them I have made videos on, some of them I have not made videos on. Almost all of them I have actually handled except for one and that is that $500 watch as I mentioned. So getting right into it, the first watch on the list is Norcane. It's the Neverest Night Sight a fully loomed dial, awesome DLC case, DLC bracelet, 40 millimeters. That fully loomed dial is kind of a rare thing from a major or independent brand. It's not something that they do very often. You see that a lot in the micro brand space, but not from the independent brand and major brand space. And I think that's really cool. This gets an awesome movement. It's the same movement that Tudor used. It's the NN. 2-0, they call it an in-house movement. However, this is a movement that they actually share with Tudor. It is made by a third party, uh, but it is an exclusive movement to Norcane. So this is actually a pretty high grade movement. It's a good looking movement. Um, and they are charging $3,490. I got hands on with this watch at the Wind Up Watch Fair and Watch Time here in New York. I actually spoke to one of the representatives there. I tried on the watches. Uh, and I believe they're going to be sending me some watches for review. Uh, this is top on my list. I really love this watch. I fell in love with it when I saw it in person, uh, tried it on. I thought it was really good looking and I'm very excited. I love their GMTs as well, but this looked different. It was really cool. And of course, you get that fully loomed dial, sort of what Tag Heuer did this year as well. Uh, but this is from a brand that is not a major brand. It's an independent brand, as you guys know, so pretty cool. Next on the list is a watch that was actually never available uh, for anyone to purchase except for people who were friends of the brand. And this is the Mad Edition 1. So it's sort of an accessible watch by Max Buser, who is the uh, lead designer, the owner of the brand MBNF. It's a 42 millimeter watch. It had a lateral time indication. So in other words, you actually turn the watch on its side to read the time. So it had a blue aluminum hour cylinder and then has a gray aluminum minute cylinder. So the minutes and hours are actually stacked. There's a point on the case where you could actually tell the time. Really cool. The top of the watch, so the dial of the watch, there's really no dial here, is just the movement with their huge rotor that swings around so it actually is always moving. It's sort of like kinetic art, really weird case on here. All this in a 42 millimeter case, which is kind of weird as well. You get sapphire and mineral crystal mixtures here. Again, this is from the mastermind behind MBNF. So essentially, this was an extremely affordable MBNF. They made this as a thank you to their supporters. So the people that they collaborate, people who have purchased watches from them before, and they sold these for under or around $2,300 hundred dollars which is a very very good price considering where it's coming from now the movement wasn't so great i will say that it was a miyota 821a i'm not even sure this is a hacking movement however i don't think it needs to be because i don't think you get a running seconds so it's probably not a hacking movement but again a cheap movement in a watch that took a lot of detail and work to make so uh they really didn't focus in on the movement they actually sold these at pretty much cost. So they reached out to the people who they were their collaborators and said, hey, do you want this watch? It is at cost. So $2,300 for them is not a lot of money. They're not making a lot of money on these watches at all if they are making any money. 
Um, and of course, they sold them only to their collaborators. They did say they would come out with these in the future for other people to purchase, and I would imagine they would be a little bit more expensive. Hopefully they go with a slightly more high grade movement. I would like to see that, but we will see very cool watch, very interesting watch to look at. I have not seen this hands-on. Um, however, I know that MBNF, who I have had hands-on with, are very high quality, and this is a very high quality watch because it's made in the same studio. Anyway, next on the list is the Ming 1709. This was a controversial watch because they used a Salita SW330 inside, and it had as an independent hour hand, and it was a time only. So in other words, they removed the GMT hand and used a GMT movement and tried to use it as a jumping hour hand, so sort of like a travel watch, uh, and they were trying to do something a little bit different. They were thinking outside of the box, but they had hand alignment issues because they actually removed that GMT hand. That was the problem. So these are essentially 2893s. They are Eta clones. They're Salita movements. They're 330s. I actually included the 1709 on my most hated watches of the year, and that was because this watch got a ton of hate However, I have to say, it's a 38 millimeter watch. It was extremely good looking. It got some awesome sapphire engraved looms. You got the sapphire dial, the sapphire crystal, not the dial, excuse me, was actually engraved and filled with loom. It's bright. They do a really good job with the loom on these watches. You had a textured dial in the center of the dial and then a track that goes around. Beautiful watches executed to the ultimate degree. They do a really good job on Ming's. Uh, they really do pay attention to the finishing. Uh, all the components that go into the watch are top notch. They did make a mistake this year. However, it's a forgivable mistake and they actually have repaired all of those watches or are in the process of repairing those watches. So I think for $2,000, this is an excellent watch that I am sad, actually, I did not actually get on board with. It was a little bit hard to buy these. They had time windows where you could purchase them. They do this a lot. Um, that's something that I think they need to do away with. Kind of sucks. Um, but again, all of these watches sell for way more than their retail on the secondary market. Uh, and Ming sort of try and combat that, and they don't do a good job at that either. So um, I, I think they need to rethink their whole buying process. Beautiful watches, well-made. Uh, and the components are amazing. Again, I was able to get hands-on with these watches as well, um, and I'm so sad that I missed out on them. So next on the list is a collaboration of two brands. One is N. Ordain. Now that is the independent watchmaker that are famous for their dials. They make some incredible enamel dials, really beautiful watches. Their watches retail for around $2,000 to $3,000. Some of them are a little bit more expensive, but that's really their wheelhouse, that area. Uh, they get a uh, automatic movement, they are a Swiss automatic movement, depending on the watch itself, you can get a Salita or you can get an Eta. And what they did is they collaborated with Paulin. Paulin are a Scottish brand as well, uh, and they make watches, but they also make all different types of products, household products as well. So they did a collaboration between these two brands and they came up with a 38 millimeter watch that costs $500 and it gets an N ordain dial. So essentially what it is is an aluminum dial that's anodized and then hand dyed by N ordain and then it is printed by N ordain as well. So they are essentially making the dial itself um, and then collaborating and then the rest of the watch is actually probably made in China or someplace like that uh, and then assembled. So that's why it's affordable. So it's actually not made in their studios just the dial is made in their studios. The material for the dial, the, the actual aluminum, might be coming from China as well, but the actual work for the majority of what the dial is, is done in, uh, in, in Scotland. So there is a pretty good amount of work being done in Scotland on this watch. Beautiful watch, it is an automatic as well. They're putting an NH35 in here rather than a Swiss movement. So you're getting a really good price. You can get these for around $500. Considering the dial is coming from Anne Ordain, that is pretty awesome. They are good looking um, and obviously 38 millimeters. So it's a dress watch, not something you're gonna be going swimming with or anything like that, but really cool, really great idea from these two brands to sort of make an Anne Ordain a little bit more accessible. Anyway, next on the list is Reuter watches. Reuter watches actually came to my attention this year. 
uh, and they have been around for a few years, I believe. They haven't been really selling watches for a very long time. Uh, and when I was introduced to them, I was blown away by the quality. These are all chronographs. They are hand finished. The movements are hand finished. All of the movements are Valju 7750s. They are broken down to the components and then all of those components are individually hand finished or plated in a gold color. So rose gold, yellow gold, or white gold, and they are then put back together. You're getting beveled edges. So this is really high-end watchmaking, sort of applied to an everyday movement. So this is a value movement, and it's almost unrecognizable. Now, you'll immediately recognize the structure of the value 7750, but when you see the watches, when you see the movements, you're gonna be blown away by the level of finishing and the quality of these movements. I think they are incredible, and they sell for around four or $5,000. You get a lot for your money here. Beautiful chronographs, really nice cases. Uh, they make a panda dial. You get to choose different colors. There's actually uh, some bespoke parts that you could actually choose the colors of and the materials that are being used. Pretty awesome. You could choose the color of your movement. It's the work that's going into it and you could definitely customize it the way you want to. Pretty awesome watches for a very good price. Um, and that brings me to the last watch. So I only have about six watches on this list because it is very hard to find watches that are affordable when considering that they are independent brands. So very, very hard to find these. Uh, but the last on the list is a watch that I have featured on other lists, and that is, of course, the Horage Supersede, a very interesting watch, a very good looking watch, um, and a very big spec monster. So that's the reason why I love this watch a lot. You're getting a micro rotor movement that's made in Switzerland. You're getting an integrated bracelet watch. They're saying that it's gonna have 100 meters of water resistance, but it could have up to 200 meters of water resistance depending on how they actually build the case and if they're able to actually do that, they're going to give you 200 meters of water resistance. You're getting a unidirectional bezel with a timing bezel on there. You're getting a big date, you're getting a power reserve. Uh, there's a bunch of different color options as well on the dial. Just a beautiful watch uh, in a 39 millimeter package. Uh, it's thin, it's good looking. You could see that movement from the back. Really a ton of watch here for a very good price. And again, this is a GMT. That's probably the most important part about this. It's a GMT and it's a true GMT. So it's a true traveler's GMT, not an office GMT. And it all comes in for a price of $4,500. The price does go up as they go through their sort of pre-order process. However, right now it's around $4,500. That's a very good price for an amazing, amazing watch. Uh, and I think if they pull this off, uh, you're gonna be blown away by the end product. And they will pull it off because they have made some amazing watches in the past. A lot of their watches are very good looking and sort of uh, Bauhaus in style a little bit. Uh, they actually helped other brands this year make their in-house movements. So Bremont is one of them. They've actually sold their know-how and, and, and their uh, equipment to them to actually make movements. So they're a player in the business. They are a true independent brand. They make their own movements um, and they make their own watches. Pretty awesome watches indeed. So anyway, definitely check them out. Check out Reuter, check out that uh, Paul and, and Ordain. I believe there are some still available. Ming, of course you guys know, and that Mad Edition 1, very cool. I, I cannot wait until they come out with something in the future. Hopefully they come out with something affordable. I'm super excited about that. I'm also very excited about getting that Norcane hands-on uh, when they do send me one. I'm very, very excited about that as well. Anyway, that's my list. Tell me what you guys think. Under $5,000. Uh, independent brand, pretty hard to come by. Uh, there are a lot of micro brands out there. I did a whole micro brand list. Uh, this was more of an independent list is what I was trying to go for. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. Uh, I really am interested in hearing what you guys have to say about this list. Is there any watches out there that, uh, that I missed on this list? Uh, the point of this list also is that none of these watches are from brands that make things that are homages. Uh, like something like Baltic. Baltic, they make homage watches. I don't consider them an independent brand. I consider them a micro brand. So that's the reason why I do that. And there's some watches on this list that sort of skate that line. Uh, but definitely, I would consider all of the brands here independent watch brands. 
um, because they do make independent watches. Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. Uh, please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel, and I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.